One of the ones responsible, he had a magazine financed by Warner Brothers and arrested him. He set up sex rings in Hollywood. And the people that he brought in, if y'all tell me if I'm lying, Quincy Jones brought in Fresh Prince. And his first movie was what? Six Degrees of Separation. Fucking some dude in the ass on, on, on a movie. Am I right or wrong? He brought in Queen Latifah. Set it off. Queen Latifah set it off, licking and kissing on women. Are you following me? Kevin Campbell. You little sweet ass up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Thank you. Um. Uh, so y'all making me forget who's the other people that he brought in. He's working with the, the Barge family. And, uh, and, and last but not least, uh, when Tupac came to Hollywood, um, it was the, the, the homosexual ritual. This is where the homosexuals came out against him. But I didn't mind. I wasn't talking about homosexuals. I say there's a homosexual ritual that they go through in the Illuminati secret societies. Right, right, and it is. Right, right, right. In Skull and Bones, Skull and they're right. made to lay in a coffin and masturbate and tell all their sexual right. secrets. Right. So when I mentioned that about it marrying itself on to hip hop, they said, well, can you prove it? Yeah. Go back and go online and read where Tupac said um, he was asked by Quincy Jones to fuck him in the ass. Mm. When, okay. when Tupac said no, that's when Tupac was marked for death. Why? Because Tupac was engaged to Quincy Jones' daughter. Quincy Jones' daughter was best friend was Aaliyah. Aaliyah was engaged to Dame Dash. Now, if y'all follow these people back, all of them either died or was brought to ruin. Mm -hmm. Dame Dash broke. He had to go back to Jay-Z. Um, Tupac dead. Aaliyah dead. Now, listen. Those of y'all that know history, how many people can we name right now that died in the same way Aaliyah died? On a plane crash on the side of a mountain, which they control by remote control. You've heard of drone airplanes, right or wrong? Ron Brown died the same way. Mickey Leland, General Torrejos from Panama. All of these people died. That's an old CIA trick. So we shouldn't fall for that. But why did they want Aaliyah out of the picture? We have to understand it. And the last movie Aaliyah, the movie that Aaliyah did was Queen of the Dam, where these people were eating her. Are you following me? Simulating eating her. And this is exactly what I said in some of my DVDs that I was selling. I said, mm. these people match our frequency and they can't live without us. Some marry us. Uh, some have children by us. Yes. And this is how they are. They got to they gotta attach themselves to our frequency Absolutely. because they can't live without us. Are you following me? So then I started talking about all the men that go into Hollywood that have to put on a dress. Mm. Mm. That's right. And this is real. So I'm saying, well, they were asking me, well, why are you talking about this in, in this matter? I said, because... It's a ritual that they have to go That's through. That's right. That's right. And and I told them the one that we should be applauding is um Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. He gave them their money back and told them to go to hell. I'm not putting yeah, on no dress. Are you, Are you following me? I'm now we need to question Dave Chappelle on on this ritual. He said when he went back to his trailer, the dress was already there, and they had two scripts already written. So when he turned down the first script, they already had the the, the next one written for him. Are you following me? So this is a ritual. Right. And I talked about the effeminization of the African male. Right. Absolutely. I talked about how the committee 300 sit in smoke-filled back rooms and they come up with these trends. Now look at the trend that we, we went through back in the day. You remember the brothers used to wear the white tees? Mm -hmm. yeah. They made easy targets. Right. So let's speed that up now. What's the trend now? Earrings, Earrings. skinny Earrings. jeans, Earrings. mohawk haircuts, mm -hmm. which would look like pubic hair. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand who creates and manufacture these these trends. Mm -hmm. uh, brothers are sagging, which y'all know is nigger spelled backwards, right? And what they did was marry the criminal culture in jail onto the street culture mm -hmm. and made it part of hip hop. So now, homosexuality is on the rise mm -hmm. and they made the new cleavage became the butt crack. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So now, I don't know if y'all gonna go for this one, That's but rush. now, probably for the last what? Eight years, ten years, Viagra's been on the market. Cialis and all these other blue pills. Okay. So now 70-year-old men taking the pill. Dick hard all damn day, and they ain't fucking no 70-year-old white women. Y'all know that. They coming after you. Predators in the hood. Are you following me? And we don't have no defense force to defend them. Are you following? But yet, rappers uh, are taking the pill. And who they coming after? Each other. You seen the boondocks when they told my homies over hoes. You know what I'm talking about. Do the homie. Are you following me?
Gangsta mm. Licious and these kind of people and, this, and these kind of scenes taking place. Mm -hmm. So the brothers were coming after one another. Are you following me? And it made it very popular now and fashionable in hip hop now to be bisexual. I call them trisexuals. They sleep with men, women, toys, animals, and a few other things. Metrosexual. Are you following me? You see, no, the met metrosexual no, came first try when they wanted to set up that buffer. Mm -hmm. So when the conscious rapper came, to go get the deal, they had to come through the metrosexual. Mm -hmm. And they let you know from the rip, you gotta go through the ritual. You see, the ritual, the homosexual ritual is designed so, so that they can bind you to them forever. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So, so, so not only, not only do this to, to rappers and other people in the music industry, presidents, dignitaries, and these other people have to go through it too. Mm -hmm. They set up Bill Clinton with Monica Lewinsky. I'm sure you all read that the fact that she could have been an agent, and she probably was. But you see what us brothers, like Sabir and other people, you see what they do is they match your frequency. They know what kind of woman you like, what kind of food you eat, who you hang out with. They match your frequency and they send that person in your path. Are you following me? Now look at all of the agents. I think I was studying this today on the FBI's War on Tupac and Black Leadership by John Patash. You have his book? No, not you might, you might have to get that book because it mentions all of the agents that, that we had among us that set the Black Panther Party up, um, that set uh, that was in the Nation of Islam. Um, Science Temple. Right, exactly. And all they mentioned these agents by name and show these people's pictures. Because these people are among us right now. Now let's not be stupid. There's 15, 20 of us in this room. Somebody in here is the agent. That's right. Don't start looking around. That's right. But some, somebody in here is just in here is going to take this information right. to the government. Everywhere. And we can't be stupid. Right. Everywhere. Are you, everywhere we go, is that one person that's in the audience that's going to take that information back. And we got to know and understand that's just a reality. Right. Until we set up an infrastructure to deal with their ass, they're going to be here. That's right. Are you following me? So we have to do that. It's in hip hop also. The brother that was uh, part of the hip hop cop task force. He admitted it. He said if it wasn't, yeah, this is the book. Twelve years it took this gentleman to write this particular book. And inside of the back of the book, he has the FBI documents so you can read it for yourself, written by the FBI on exactly what they did in hip-hop to Tupac and black leadership. And he made the connection. Are you following me? And um, see, you could easily dispute what I say, but when it's in black and white, it's hard to refute this. Are you following me? It took him 12 years to write this book. He gave me the original manuscript that I tried to get him a publishing deal and couldn't get it. So him, Pam Africa, and some other people got together and they got the book out. Are you following me? Right, so they, they mentioned it in the DVD about the hip-hop car and they said that if uh, rappers didn't shoot one another up, somebody didn't get raped or somebody didn't get robbed, they would provide an incident for something to go down because they were setting hip-hop up for destruction. Now, this homo dude, hold that, what's his name? Puffy P. Diddy, maybe yeah. this week. <laughs> he was one of the ones that orchestrated some of these things. Now listen, there was a gentleman that he hooked up with, a fashion designer, a gay fashion designer, who made, who put the implantable biomicrochip inside of the tag on the, on the, on the jeans. And what, it, what they did was, they, they made the, they put a medium tag on the large jeans. So when the brothers went to go buy the clothes, they would sag, and they'd naturally be big. So then when the information came out on how they were tracking the rappers in every city, via your cell phone, wow. and via the implantable biomicrochip. Mm, okay. So what they did was they put a dossier together, 500 pages thick. It's in a D, you have the DVD uh, rap sheets? Mm -hmm. Nah, that's how I had it though. Inside of the DVD rap sheets, the white boy, he uh, wrote a letter, made a couple of phone calls and emailed the Miami Police Department and the New York Police Department and they sent the dossier to the white boy. He put it in a book and took a camera to follow him around and he went to all of the rappers that were in the book and he talked to them about that and they were shocked. So it's a 500 page dossier, um, a surveillance of dossier on all of the rappers. So when he questioned them about this, they were shocked that they was in it. And he told them, he said it's a hip hop task force following the rappers. And they were scratching their head trying to figure out, well, how did, how did they know I'd be in Denver, Colorado, or Miami, or Liberty City, or St. Louis, or Philly? They were being tracked. And they were trying to figure out how they were being tracked. They had people on the inside. Just like when um, T.I. got busted. 
Did you see all these military weapons that T.I. had in the trunk of his car that he's supposed to purchase from his agent? Well, T.I. got set up because they, they put somebody on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now, T.I. got busted with over 15 weapons. All right? They said some of the weapons were only, uh, they were military weapons. Okay? I don't, maybe y'all can answer that. How do military weapons get out on the street? But anyway, his, his girlfriend, now his wife, with the reality show, because she got rewarded, she got busted with a purse full of pills. All right? He got sentenced to 15 to life. Why is T.I. on the street? Somebody answer that for me. I'm gonna let y'all marinate on that for a minute. How the hell is CI on the street already? Now y'all know if that was my black ass, I'd be under the jail, right or wrong. Because it was a Absolutely. But now they're using TI. TI working with Channel 2 and, and working with the police department in Atlanta, and he got a tip line now. Are you following me? So you can call 1 800 tip TI or whatever, and you can get the police. Are you following me? See, but this is what they're doing to hip hop. Why? Because it's, a, it's an attack. But we may not recognize it because it's a cultural attack. Mm -hmm. They're attacking the culture. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yeah. And we got to understand that, and it's real. That's right. And even though you may not think that you're part of it, but some people like Denzel Washington and other people are part of it. Right. Now, it was Jay-Z the one that bragged about he's sipping $20,000 bottles of Cristal uh, in San Tropez with his hotel costing $40,000 a night. Mm. And he was the one that bragged on the cover of uh, the Source magazine when they, mm -hmm. when they split him away from Dame Dash. Mm -hmm. All right? And he was the one bragging about this, talking about he's sipping Chris Dow with Blue Bloods. Well, who are the Blue Bloods? If you read the book, The 13 Bloodlines of the Illuminati, you can link Jay-Z uh, right on in there with Barack Obama. That's why they best friends. It's no coincidence. Are you following me? And all of these people play a part in dumbing down the music and uh, perverting the culture or the subculture called hip hop. It was them that said that they heard the uh, they heard the Masonic, the Messianic voice coming from hip hop, not from one individual. Are you following me? But all of us collectively having that energy. Are you following me? Because hip hop, it was the voice of the voices. I don't know what the hell it is now. My man Black Doc calls it shit out. Strategic high intensity training. That we see it walking, talking, and doing things, but it's not hip hop. And y'all and y'all can't even defend that madness. What we hear today is not hip hop. Because if it was hip hop, we would hear the four elements, and we don't hear the four elements at all. Are you following me? Yes. So we have to understand that and just be real with it. This madness that we're hearing today is definitely not hip hop. So when I dropped all this information on um, the Occult Science Radio interview, which is the 18th chapter of the book, how many of y'all uh, go to uh, www.worldstarhiphop.com? On Worldstar, I got over 400,000 hits. Now, I don't know them brothers. They took the information from War uh, from uh, the Occult Science Radio, put images to it, and they put it on their site. 16 and 17 year olds were blowing my phone up, and I'm like, well, where did you get the information? They said on Worldstar. I contacted the people from Worldstar and asked them if I could send them some more information. They was like, nah. So I guess they wanted to do their own thing, which is cool with me, but nonetheless, we need to keep the information in its proper context. Because we don't want young people just going crazy. Now, I can't help but that average dude that's feel like he's been deceived, he might run up on Jay-Z's ass. I don't know that, but that ain't my doing. I'm not instructing any young people to do that. But we have to question these people. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Uh, but, so what they did recently, they did question Jay-Z, and they asked them about whether or not he's part of the Illuminati. Now, let's keep in mind, we've thrown this term around Illuminati, and a lot of us don't know what it means. Illuminati means holders of the light, light bearers. And they figure they have the light and they hold the torch, and you see the signs and symbols all around us. But you have to become symbol literate. You got to be able to know what the signs and symbols look like in order for you to read the language. Let me give you an example real quick, and I don't want to talk you to death. The Exxon sign. The Exxon, do I have Exxon gas station here? Mm -hmm. the Exxon E X X O N, but it's not two X's. It's a Rosicrucian cross tilted sideways. All right? It's called the Cross of Lorraine. And where did they use that at in a ritual? Where did Dr. Martin Luther King get assassinated? Mm -hmm. At the Lorraine Motel. Okay. Yeah. Are you following me? Yes. See, it's a ritual. Okay. And they get two and three shooters at the same time to crisscross so they don't miss. Right. Same thing they did with JFK at the 33rd, 33rd parallel right. in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. These people are not playing. Right. So some people ask me, well, what they got to do with hip hop? Why do they want little rappers? And Because we're influencing the world. Everywhere you go in the world, hip hop is there. 
and Becky and Ashley and Jennifer and Johnny and the little white kids are getting it, now it's a problem. Are, are you following me? It's a real problem with them. Can you imagine? Most, these people run multinational corporations and they got to come home and listen to NWA and Public Enemy? Are you following me? It's a problem. It's a problem for them. They're trying to uh, pass this down to their, uh, their children. But if their children's minds, heads, and hearts are into hip hop, you know, things might change. You see, we have to understand something and be real and be real with this. We constitute what? Maybe 12 to 13 percent of the population? Mm -hmm. So it's a large majority of young white people that grew up on Minister Farrakhan, grew up on hip hop, grew up on listening to black people that voted Barack Obama into office. Not us. If we 12 to 13 percent of the population, and you, you do the numbers and you, and you uh, equate the figures, with who voted for him, there's a lot of white people that voted for him. Well, who are these white people? These are the young people that grew up on hip hop. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is this is why it's imperative that they put certain people around Barack Obama to control things. Now, I'm going to tell you something. He's gotten more death threats than all of the American presidents combined on a daily and consistent basis. Are you following me? I don't feel sorry for his ass. Right. Him and his wife belong to the Council on Foreign Relations, right. which I talked about in the book. Mm -hmm. So I said, sister, hold on. I know you want to curse right. me out, but you got to do your research. That's right. yeah. That's Are right. you following me? Um, Michelle mm -hmm. is often seen throwing up signs to the Illuminati because mm -hmm. she speaks that language. She's on the board of directors of the Council on Foreign Relations. Mm -hmm. Council on Foreign Relations is the CFR. The CFR is a branch of the Illuminati in America. Right. Plain and simple. Right. They have an agenda. Right. The agenda is to make all of us mindless ass slaves. Right. I don't know if y'all read the document, the Rex 84, I'm sure you have, the King Alpha plan. Right. They wrote us in as three-fifths, not three-fifths, pardon me, they wrote us in as uh, sheeple yes. and units. Yes. You're not even human to them. Right. You're useless eaters. Right. You're like sheeple. Right. Inside of the King Alpha plan, they said they, it would take eight hours for them to round us up and put us behind uh, and put us in concentration camps. And this is real. And you're worried about fucking CD cases and rims? Come on, man. This is a lot deeper than that, man. They're attacking the culture. They're going to weaken the culture to the point where they're going to uh, blur the gender line. You're not, you're not going to know whether or not you're male, female, whether you have sex with animals or whatever. Are you following? Exactly. And dehumanizing us at the same time. So we have to understand that. This is by design. This is about on every facet and every level of your life. For example, some of us that are here now, the last meal we ate was probably a number three at McDevil's or Murder King <laughs> or Toxic Hell or Drunken Donuts, right or wrong? Or Dairy Queer, one of these places. Oh, Kentucky Live Chicken. That's not food. And we, but it's hard to tell people that. This is not food that we, we're consuming. Are you following me? But what does it do to the body? Thank you. You're eating Franken food. Are you, so we have to put living food in a living body in order to exist. But I don't want to talk y'all to death. So what I did, I put together um, different lectures to put on one one DVD so you can get it like a shot to the damn vein, straightforward, without all of the damn gymnastics. So you follow me? Um, uh, the brother, good brother out of Baltimore, put it together for me just to show young people to give them a, a quick, a quick uh, sideline, fireside chat and show them the images and the symbols. All right. So from this, you could do the other research to the other speakers and and researchers that have done a broader, a broader uh, research on this. But see, young people can't sit still, and we need to understand that they want everything quick, fast, supersize everything. All right. And I don't blame them, because a lot of older people just talk too damn much. Let's get right to the damn point. I don't need all the fluff. Are you following me? And this is real. You know, they download stuff. They send in pictures over YouTube and MySpace and Facebook. But we do need to let, let, let young people know that Facebook was set up by the government. And y'all need to get that shit. Dumbasses, you let people know you're using the bathroom. I'm about to go to the toilet. I'm about to go to eat. I'm calling my friend Margaret. Come the fuck on. You're giving them all your information. Everywhere you go and everything you do. Twittering like twittiots. They twittering this shit. Knowing damn well that that thing got to go through a satellite. Hit a couple of beams. Bounce off a couple of things. Go through them and then you get it. We need to understand understand that. They admitted it on, on, uh, on the internet that YouTube was, I mean, uh, Facebook was set up by the government. 
along with the face, uh, facial recognition software that they were selling. Okay. So you can walk through the airport now, they take a picture of your face, they got all your information. Well, how did they do that? You gave it to them on MySpace and Facebook. You remember 10 years ago when they started getting your, uh, your zip code? At, at uh, Home Depot and yeah, Office yeah. Depot and all these other places, yeah. you see, they was collecting data. That's right. Collecting data to get everybody in the system, right. Right. to get everybody on the same right. damn grid. Right. Now everybody in this room have to adhere to five numbers that belong to you and you only. Mm -hmm. All right. In the music industry, we call it intellectual property when you make a song. In the computer world, you call it what an IP address. Mm -hmm. Everyone has an IP address. You got a physical address. You got a zip code and an area code to your cell phone number. You probably have two. You have a social security number and you have an address. They can easily round you up. It ain't no damn problem. Track down and find you through one of those numbers. Plain and simple. Are you following me? So we have to understand them, man. And um, the attack, like I said, the attack is cultural, but they coming for us physically. Physically. Now listen, last but not least, they got these acoustic sound weapons that can fry your ass from a distance. Absolutely. And they mounted them on top of police trucks. Are you following me? That's right. Let me tell you, watch the DVD, The Panama Deception, yes. with General Torrejos. Right. They That's invaded right. Panama to arrest Noriega, That's right. but they went into black neighborhoods right. to test these weapons. That's right. If you watch The Panama Deception, it'll show you what the weapons can do. What they do from a distance, probably about a mile away, they point it in your direction. The sound beam goes out, and it fries your insides, but it leaves you standing. This is sound acoustic weapons, and they use it for riots. And this is real. Are you following me? So I have different uh, conversations with the beautiful thing that we was at a couple of weeks ago in New York. It was beautiful because all of the frontline organizations came together. No more bickering and arguing. Although I, had, I had, did have some questions to ask each one of them. I wanted to ask the Moors. Um, what's the science of going downtown to file with the open enemy? He showed what the hell he did with the Native American. He's not, not going to honor no treaty and your sovereignty. Fuck him! We got to get permission to be ourselves from the cracker? No, 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 no. Just be yourself. Am I right or wrong? Right. He's not going to honor the documents any old damn way. Name one doc. Matter of fact, Dr. Scott Whitaker, he, he asked me this. Name one disease that he's ever cured since he's been on the planet. Thank you. I mean, we got medical doctors and all kind of letters and numbers behind their name. What did they ever cure? Are you following me? So we have to understand that they're not. It's not designed for that. They are the ones that are called in to make the damn disease. Dr. Scott Whitaker calls this new disease and virus they put out. He call. They said he hit it in the H1N1 vaccination, but they put the disease inside the vaccination. He called it the, uh, the Hispanic one nigga one virus. Are you following me? <laughs> so we have to understand. But well, listen, if you go do your if you go do your research, they recalled all of the, the, the batches of, of uh, vaccines and the syringes because the syringes wasn't big enough to give you the implantable bio, bio microchip that they were going to put in you once they gave you the vaccination. And this is real. Now you're walking around with the chip in your ass. Are you following me? Without you even knowing about it. How many how many people here took the virus? I mean the vaccination. No, no, y'all need to stop. Nobody? You remember you remember early on they were trying to give it to pregnant women? What was that for? You know damn well if you're pregnant, you don't get vaccinated. But people fell for that. And I think on the uh on the internet they had a cheerleader who took it and 10 days later it messed up her neurological system and she can only walk backwards. Oh, y'all think I'm playing. She can only walk, walk backwards, but you see they didn't take the same one they gave to the general population. We have to understand it's different for them. The blue bloods, you understand what I'm saying? They took a different vaccination. Are you following me? So, I truly, I'm going past belief. They had designed that particular um, experiment to shift the plates up under Iran at the behest of the Mossad in Israel. The Mossad is like the CIA in America, That's right. like the MI5 and MI6 in Britain and in England. All right. So they was experimenting with the Heart Project to move one of the Teutonic plates that's under Iran. So that devastation that you've seen in Haiti can happen in Iran so they can install it. Now listen, 
I don't know if y'all watching or listening to the world news. Mm -hmm. There's still revolution in Iran, but they won't let you know that. They're trying to install a puppet leadership inside of Iran like they did in the 80s when Jimmy Carter was president. When they took right. So they, they installed the Shah, and when they came after the Shah, the, uh, the military brought the Shah of Iran to America to protect him. Well, you remember recently when they went and extracted uh, Aristide out of Haiti? What was going on? You see, they tried it then and it didn't work, and they had to reinstall him and put him back in place. Now, I don't know if y'all know geography, you'll probably do, but where Haiti sits, there's other islands that surround Haiti. Haiti is on the same uh, land mass as Santo Domingo. So how did Haiti get, uh, the earthquake happened to Haiti and not anyone else? Hello, hello. Are you following me? Yes. You see, the Heart Project, which sits up in Alaska, right. shifted the Teutonic Plate under Haiti. Mm. Mm. Are you following me? Yes. We have to understand, and that is real. These people are not playing. You talk about regentrification. They're moving black people out of the inner city. What well, they're doing at the governments and countries of people. <laughs> the tsunami was not an accident. Thank you. Thank These you. things are not accidents. That's right. Are you following me? Yeah. So we have we have to understand this, and this is real. And I'm telling y'all straight up, the attack is on. So I'm gonna tell you, like Stephen Biko told us, revolution is not an event; it's a process. Violence in the context of being free is not good and evil; it's fucking necessary. Dr. King said that. Are you following me? And we have to understand that to a large, 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 large degree. And listen, what I'm saying for these few minutes ain't got a damn thing to do with Professor Griff's beliefs. Believe this shit, take it, or let it alone, it's going down. That's right. Are you following me? Yes. So that's why when people approach me with this religious shit, I say, get it out of my face, dude. I want nothing to do with religion. That's right. It's too divisive. That's right. If my spirit can't connect with yours, then I don't really need to be around you. Right. I want to connect with like-minded people. Right. We have to survive. Right. Last but not least, I'm trying to develop this thing, and maybe someone here can help me. I'm trying to develop this thing called the Black Pack. Regular average backpack that you see these crackers climbing these mountains with. We're going to get one of them and we're going to put in it everything we need to survive for 90 days. Put it in the front closet by the front door of your house. When the shit go down, snatch it and let's go meet somewhere and defend ourselves. Are you following me? Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. That's what we need. We need a contingency plan. They got one. That's right. Absolutely. I go to these little white boy preparedness meetings and gun shows and shit. They ready. Yes, sir. Buying cases and cases of bullets. Yes, for what? Did you see on the, on the uh, internet where they had thousands and thousands of coffins in Georgia, what? in South Georgia, what? already ready? Whoa. So it's going down. Mm. Mm. Are you following me? Mm. So we have to understand this particular dynamic, man. Mm -hmm. I love y'all a life. Love I'm glad y'all came out. Yes, Purchase the book. The information yes, is definitely in here. Yes, Support the brother. Love y'all to death. Love y'all to life, rap. Yes, All right, peace, man. Hey. Give thanks. Right, Give hey. thanks. Hey. If y'all want to get the DVD, I got about ten of them here. Um, I don't know what you charge for your DVDs, but I'll let you handle that. I'll just turn them over to you. You charge them, all right? All right. Uh, I really appreciate that. And y'all Philadelphia folks, I want you to know that we're going to have all of his collection in the Black Star newspaper. So y'all know about Black Star newspaper, the next edition. And it's going to be permanent from now on that this brother's collection is going to be in that newspaper from now on. We're going to move a lot of that other ad stuff out of there and right. put this brother in there because ain't no other Philadelphia newspaper going to touch this brother. Right. And that's why the Black Star is going to put him on the front and on the back and in the middle. I'll give that. Thank you, brother. Whoever purchased the book, just come get a free DVD. It's Public Enemy in 19. 87. Wow. This is vintage. This is when flavor wasn't on crack. All right? <laughs> Are you following me? So whoever purchased the book, you can get one of these for free.